An underwater camera is dunked down to the bottom of Harris Creek off the Choptank River. It's how researchers are collecting and comparing information on oysters to see if restoration efforts are paying off. I'm Cheryl Costello at the Smithsonian Environmental Research Center where a new report out gives oyster managers information on why they should combine protection with restoration. They tell us the combination creates reefs that have more structure and provide more diverse habitat. The restoration is definitely creating an oyster reef that's different and we hope something a little bit more close to natural than than what the harvest areas are. Matt Ogburn gives Bay Bulletin the scoop on what is now reported in a marine journal. The fisheries conservation lab at CERC used GoPro cameras to survey about 200 sites, a quick and low cost method comparing restored, protected and harvested areas. Take a look at the difference between Broad Creek, one of Maryland's most productive harvest areas, and Harris Creek, which was designated an oyster sanctuary in 2010 and later had 350 acres of oyster reefs restored. At Broad Creek has a lot of oysters, but they're sort of mostly individual oyster shells kind of sitting on the bottom, so it's a pretty flat bottom. And in Harris Creek, we see clumps of oysters that are growing and standing up and growing on top of each other. Ogburn and his colleagues say that vertical structure allows more oysters to grow and provides a habitat for other species. Over time, we should see denser populations of oysters and ultimately more oysters. Research shows protecting oyster reefs only goes so far. Ogburn says actively restoring them by adding baby oysters and reconstructed reefs provides the biggest payoff. For Chesapeake Bay Media's Bay Bulletin, I'm Cheryl Costello.